All right, 2402 lecture, uh, chapter 28, pregnancy and development video number two. So we've got a fertilized egg. We have a, a zygote, and it begins to mitotically divide. So meiosis, remember, produced the sperm cells and egg cells, largely. And then once we've got an embryo, now it's diploid. Now you just got to divide those cells and maintain their chromosome number. So now we're just going a 46 chromosome cell divides in two and you get two 46 chromosome cells. Then you get four and then you get eight and 16. And these early divisions, embryonic divisions are called cleavage. Cleavage, which is just mitotic divisions, results in the daughter cells, which are called blastomeres. They have a specific name. Let's go to the next slide here if I can. I'll go back to this one, assuming this will ever work. Hello, computer. All right, so here we see, you know, they're divided once. Here's two cells, then four cells, eight, blah, 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 right? So each of these cells is called a blastomere. That's a blastomere, that's a blastomere, etc. cetera. Uh, the solid ball of cells, once it becomes a solid ball, they call that embryo stage a morula. So <clears throat> they have real simple names. Zygote, two cell, four cell, eight cell, 16 cell. Once you get to 16, you're called a morula. And it stays, as long as it's a solid ball, it stays being called a morula until that solid ball starts to get a hollow spot in it. As soon as it starts to get this little capsule, this cavity, they call it a blastocyst. So the term blastocyst is the, basically the equivalent stage that you saw in lab of a blastomere. I'm sorry, check that. Uh, a blastula from the uh, sea star. but these guys have to implant. So blastocyst, because a cyst is kind of a buried or embedded thing. So once it becomes this hollowish thing, called a blastocyst. Now there's two parts. There's what they call, here they are labeled, the embryoblast or inner cell mass, which is this bit right here. And then the outer ring, which is called a trophoblast. And this is called the blastocyst cavity, but whatever. So those two structures have different jobs. As you might guess, the thing called the embryoblast uh, becomes the embryo. Cat! Uh, the trophoblast, which is that outer ring, is the thing that uh, kind of interfaces with initially with the endometrium. So that, that trophoblast is the part that's got to kind of contact the endometrium. It doesn't become the placenta. The placenta is a later structure, but it kind of forms that first interface with the endometrium. The process of that uh, blastocyst, that embryo embedding, is called implantation, where it kind of buries itself in that inner uterine wall right here. So that's that endometrium right here. That's the vascular layer that this little critter is going to bury in, right? So there you see it kind of stuck in the wall. <clears throat> Uh, blah, blah, blah. Now the embryo in the meantime is doing its part. The embryo is producing a hormone, which you may remember called human chorionic gonadotropin. We're talking about humans, so obviously it's human chorionic gonadotropin. It's just chor chorionic gonadotropin. Now what conadi, bleh, it's a mouthful. What chorionic gonadotropin does is it tells the mother that there is an embryo. And so she shouldn't go through the normal menstrual process and and menstruate. So what that HCG does is it causes the female to preserve the corpus luteum. And if you remember, the corpus luteum is the, is the structure that produces a lot of progesterone, especially and estrogens. And those two, those two hormones are what maintain the endometrium. So if you can keep that endometrium going for nine months, well, you can keep a baby going for nine months. Uh, the placenta forms shortly, which I'll show you in a I may as well show you right here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This is two video. This is two slides down. Sorry, there's a delay. My computer. There it is. Um, the placenta is this whole structure right here. So the placenta is the interface between the, uh, the embryo's circulatory system and the mother's circulatory system. As you can see, the mother's, here's a blood vessel from a mother, and it kind of fills these little pools. And it doesn't actually go into the blood of the baby, right? The baby's blood kind of goes out in these little structures called chorionic villi. This is a villus. Anytime you see the word villus, you think of a little projection. 
and that's to increase surface area, allowing a greater surface area for the exchange of the mother and child uh, uh, nutrients between the two, right? They don't ever give each other their blood. They just give nutrients and transfer waste and gases and so on. So the embryonic portion of the placenta is the chorion, specifically those chorionic villi. They're just parts of the chorion. The maternal portion is called the decidua basalis and the decidua capsularis. Now the decidua basalis is this part that is, they kind of draw here, right? But it's the part that's interfacing with the embryo directly, whereas the decidua capsularis is kind of forms the bubble around the outside of the entire uh, embryo and its amniotic fluid. So ba basalis is really the, the part that's aimed at the embryo's umbilical cord. The ca capsularis is kind of the area around the entire uh, embryo sac. Uh, boop, 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 boop. All right, so right here it says uh, placenta was from the previous text slide. That's the one I'm showing you here. Placenta, and then uh, extra embryonic extra embryonic membranes will be next, and that's the end of video two.